Good morning. I'm Kieran Casey. This is the Irish Inquiry, and you're looking at Breathing for Life, the program that aims to show you how to breathe for a better life. As Pink Floyd said, breathe, breathe in the air, don't be afraid to care. And all of us involved in this production, we care. We care about your health, your freedom, your individual expression. And one of the key elements to being able to achieve that in your lifetime is conscious control and awareness of your own breath. Now, today I'm joined by John McKeown, who is the practitioner of the Wim Hof method and also works with electromagnetic radiation. But before we, we go over to John, and um, there were a few comments um, concerning yesterday's program and Monday's program. Monday, we had Maria Connolly and showing us the Wim Hof method. Yesterday, we had Patrick McKeown, who was talking about the Bucheco method. And the comments suggested that there seemed to be quite a difference in approach between the two methods. And that's that's fair enough. Um, there are different ways and means for different people. So it's a matter of looking at what we're presenting here and deciding which is the, the technique that would suit you best, or maybe a combination of the two. But everything that we're talking about here is aimed at showing you how to breathe better, breathe healthier, breathe more happiness into your life. So now let's talk to John. Good morning, Kieran. How are you? Good morning, Good morning John. Thank you very much for, for joining us. As I said there in the intro, you're a qualified Wim Hof instructor. Um, but I know that you've got a very interesting story. Would you mind telling us now a little bit about your journey to becoming the Wim Hof instructor? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, well, my story, everybody has a story, so here's mine. Um, for years, I would have suffered with um, headaches. And I would have went to the doctors and this, that, and the other. I'd been in, in hospital in the machines to see if I had anything physically wrong with my head. And they never could find anything, thankfully. So I just carried on taking the tablets and stuff. And then in about 2009, um, my wife started having some issues. Her, her back froze a couple of times. And then her shoulder froze a couple of times. And she went to the doctor, got her blood tested and stuff, and they could never find anything wrong wrong with her from that way. They said she must have been under stress. But unfortunately, about six months later, she was diagnosed with cancer. So um, she did not want to take chemotherapy. Everybody has, has their own opinions, but she didn't want to take chemotherapy. So what we did, we went down what's called an alternative route. And one of those uh, treatments was to go to Germany where she had what's called ozone therapy. Uh, and basically ozone, pure oxygen is O2, this is O3. And what they basically do is they take about 200 milliliters of blood out of your arm, mix it with ozone, the blood goes pinky and they push it back in again. And you do that over 10 days. Um, now, what was interesting is before they start that treatment, they do what's called live blood analysis. So where they take a prick of your blood from your finger and they put it under a microscope and magnify it a couple of hundred times and look at the shape of the red blood cells. So red blood cells should be nice and round and bouncing freely around. It should all be the same size. But Jackie's blood was not like that at all. It was all, the red blood cells were all different shapes and sizes and it was all clumped together. So her blood wasn't flowing properly throughout her body. And then they tested my blood and my, my red blood cells were in strings. And it's called the Rouleau effect, okay? And that can co come, come from different, it can come from different reasons. It can from, come from the food you eat or the, the, since I've since discovered from the radiation in the air or the environment that you live in. So this ozone therapy basically cleans your blood. So you clean, you, you, you change the oil in your car every year this is something the same. You, you basically get your, your blood fully cleaned. So she did that for, for, a, a, for, it's for 10 days treatment. And she said it was like a full detox. So, so she felt terrible after five days, had splitting headaches from it. But on the sixth and seventh day, she felt amazing. Now, this didn't cure the cancer. OK, I just want to make that sure. That didn't cure the cancer. Uh, we also, she also got what's called hype 
hyperthermia, which is heat treatment. So cancer cells die at 42 degrees Celsius. So what they would do in Germany, also in Germany, they would, it's called localized hypothermia, where they heat the, the, the tumor and the tumor breaks up. And then in Germany, she also got the tumor removed. So that, that was in from 2010 to 2013, she got that treatment and she had the tumor removed in 2013. So during that time, I was doing my own. Once you go, what's called alternative, you're sort of on your own. So I was doing a lot of research on the web and I discovered a guy called Dr. Otto Warburg, who um, basically said that a cancerous cell is any cell that instead of using oxygen to generate energy, it's in a fermentation process. So it's switched and it's, and so that's why you would hear people saying that you shouldn't eat sugar when you've got cancer because sugar feeds fermentation. So if you can stop the sugar supply, you'll stop the fermentation. And there is a diet called the ketogenic diet for people who have cancer where you don't eat any sugar and you don't eat any carbs. But you know, that's that. But anyway, this Dr. Otto Wahlberg, he said that you need to keep your hemoglobin high. You need to keep your blood oxygen levels high and you need to also have what's called respiratory enzymes. So I started, just, you know, so again, so that's the first thing we started doing is making sure we get regular blood tests, make sure our hemoglobin is high. Um, so exercise keeps your blood flowing. Um, most of us live a sedentary life and so blood doesn't flow. And there's other things that can cause, um, again, I'm talking at cell level that can stop, cause low levels of blood flow. Um, and we also discovered another German doctor, scientist, Dr. Joanna Budwig, who says that in our diet of the modern world, we've took out all the natural oils. We need essential fatty acids in our diet because what that does is it, it, it helps the, the membrane of cells and it allows for the transport of oxygen from the outside to the inside of the cell. But unfortunately, in the modern diet, we've taken out natural oils. So even, for example, say in porridge, you have your porridge, but your porridge before you, it comes, before it goes on the shelf is heat treated. They dry out all the oil, the natural oils, because if they left them in, they would absorb, that would absorb oxygen and have a short shelf life. So obviously they want food to have a long shelf life. So they take out all the natural oils and pump in other stuff, preservatives and hydrogenated oils to stop the absorption of oxygen. So if you actually think about it, we're eating foods that stop the absorption of oxygen which is not good, okay? So we have to also look at the diet. So, so so essentially then, your wife's condition led to a revolution in your combined approach to healthcare and, and, and how you actually dealt with it. Yeah, and so, so it's a voyage of discovery. You know, we're not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not an expert in any of this, but it's just, you can find a lot out on the web if you go looking for it. And it was through this process that, that you found out about the, the Wim Hof method, I believe. Yeah, so, 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 so what we were doing was, obviously oxygen at cell level is very important. So we were going outside and doing breathing exercises, not knowing anything about doing proper breathing exercises. And I just stumbled upon a video of, of Wim Hof doing all these magnificent things, amazing things, all, all by controlling his breath. So we started practicing. I signed up for the 10, 10 week online course, was blown away by it. Um, and then the following year went to his home place in, in Holland, did a week's advanced course and learned the science behind it. And then in 2017, I went for the week in Poland where you climb a mountain uh, in your shorts and boots. It was minus eight degrees Celsius at the bottom and minus 13 degrees Celsius at the top. It's a five hour trek, but you're just wearing shorts and boots. And you can do that all by controlling your breath. So since then, our daily routine is every single morning, we do three rounds of Wim Hof breathing. We do it in the bed, the breathing, <laughs> do the three rounds of Wim Hof breathing in the bed, and then get out and I have, and we both have a, a cold shower. And then I, I'm also, uh, I do Qigong as well. So, so that's my morning routine. That, that is amazing. I, as I've said, um, over the last couple of days, I've only started practicing the, the Wim Hof method um, last week. It was last Sunday of last week. Um, and I don't know what, I, I'm just trusting my own intuition here, but my instinct was to actually have the shower first. So the first thing I do is get up straight into the bathroom, switch on the shower, 
and I'm now up to two and a half minutes under the cold shower. Brilliant. And it is quite an amazing experience because you're actually embracing the cold. Yeah. And yeah. when you start to do because there's an initial gasp, but when you start to embrace the cold, your body relaxes into the experience. Um, and it is, I have to say, it's, it's it definitely it wakes you up without a shadow of a doubt. Um, it does. So, the, the body knows what to do if you let it. The problem is the brain gets in the way. And, and when you feel the cold first, you, you tense up and, and sort of panic. But as you said, if you can relax into it and just tell yourself, actually, this, is, this isn't as bad as I thought, and relax again through breath work, nice and gentle, and you actually will enjoy it. And as, as you said, afterwards, you feel, you feel amazing. It's a great start to the day. But and it's from reading Wim Hof, it's very clear that the, the exposure to cold is combined with the breath work so it's it's an integrated system it's not just the breathing and no. it's not just the cold it's it's the two working together so yeah. what what are the benefits of combining the cold the cold exposure and the breathing okay well well each have individual benefits um so so probably the 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 main benefit from the breathing is you actually produce anti-inflammatory hormones and um, so when you do that breath hold, so uh, when you do the, 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 the three rounds of breathing and then at the end of each round you do a breath hold, your oxygen level drops and the brain senses this and goes into a panic mode, even though you're relaxed. So, so you're not, you, you are relaxed, but it releases um, anti-inflammatory hormones. So it helps for inflammation um, and you also alkaline your body by doing this breathing you raise your blood ph up up to about no, normal blood ph is 7.36 it shoots up to about 7.8 and so again that's good for killing bacteria because bacteria doesn't like living in an alkaline environment it, it will come back down that's the benefits mainly from from the breathing the men benefits from the cold is that it's a cardiovascular workout so what happens when you step into the cold your body wants to protect the core organs, okay? So what it does, it switches off or closes all the, the small veins and cap capillaries at the extremities in, 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 say, like your hands and your feet. And so blood pressure rises slightly. Um, but again, it's a mindful practice. You change your breathing and you stay calm, so you're staying calm. And then when you step out of the cold shower, you don't warm your body up. Uh, by putting on clothes and drying. You should let your body warm up naturally. And what happens is then all these veins open up, all the little muscles that control all these capillaries open up again. And then, so what, what you've actually done is a cardiovascular workout. So you'll find that people who do this over a period of time that their resting heart rate will have dropped. So it's a cardiovascular workout. Uh, and also by getting in, into the cold, you actually produce more white blood cells. So again, white blood cells fight off infection. And the reason you combine the two, it's unusual that you do the, the cold shower first. You, usually people do the breathing first and then get into the cold um, because you've raised your adrenaline even though you, you're in a relaxed state so you can cope with the cold better. Okay, so that's, that's normally the routine is, is breathing then the cold. Well, I have to say- my As you know, with Wim Hof, there's no rules. Exactly. That's that, that's one thing I really like about his writing. And what you've said there about um, reducing the, the, the resting heart rate, um, I after doing the, the shower and the breathing this morning, and then after I actually, because I do a morning meditation as well, I check, check my own blood pressure and it, it gives you your heart rate. And it was 56 beats per minute which the average, I think, is, is a healthy norm is 72. Yeah. So I could see a definite improvement there. Yeah, yeah. And now, I tell you, we're, we're, we're going to be going into the demonstration soon, yeah. but I've a couple of points there to make. Um, anybody who'd like to join um, John in the demonstration, if you can go to the comments and you will see a pinned comment um, and also uh, uh, with a link in it, and all the, underneath this video, there's uh, on the description, there's also a link. So if you want to join this demonstration, click on the link. This is going to take you to the Irish Inquiry website and a page where you can sign up. And this then 
will give you access to the private room where you can join John for the for the workshop and you can join in with all of the, the, the remaining workshops for the rest of the month. Um, now John, just before we, we hand over to you for the demonstration, yeah. when we're finished, I'd like to, to have a, a wee chat with you about the other aspect of your work because you're also an electrical engineer yeah. and you do work with electromagnetic radiation and electromagnetic frequencies and the the imbalances and the the, the harm that they can cause to individuals so yeah, no problem okay so we'll talk about that look i'm going to hand, hand you over to john now folks you're in john's tender loving care for the next half an hour and then we'll come back and have a wee little chat about emf and emr all right Ian. talk to you later god bless john Okay, everyone, uh, again, thanks for, for joining. Um, I'm not sure how familiar you, you are with Wim Hof breathing, but anyway, I'll go through a, a demonstration first and um, then we, we'll actually do the practice. So what I like people to do at the beginning is to breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth during these three rounds. And what you might feel is you might feel some sensations here and what that is, is you've got glands here that release what's called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide causes the veins to open up, called vasodilation. It allows for a better blood flow and a better uptake of oxygen. Um, also, this nitric oxide kills bacteria. So, as Patrick McKeown was saying yesterday, we all should be breathing in through our nose. And this nitric oxide is the first line of defense to protect us from any external bacteria from entering into our bodies but if we breathe in through our mouth we bypass this defensive mechanism so we're going to breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth and then also we're going to breathe in in so i'm going to just stand up here so we're going to i'm, I'm going to go on my honker so that you can see me so we're going to breathe into the belly and into the chest so i'm going to lie down and just show you first so don't do anything just watch so when we do this, it's safer to lie down because you can get dizzy or lightheaded. So I'm going to tilt this, sorry. Hopefully you can see the mat there, yeah. 